Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nate or Tater channel. Alright, I am here to tell you today you do not have to change the Wi-Fi settings in all of your personal devices like your phone, your tablet, your smart TV, your Roku, your computer, your game console, just because you get a new Wi-Fi router. There is a way that you can actually have all your personal devices stay the same and you just swap out the Wi-Fi router. So there are a couple hiccups that can happen though, so I'll touch on those uh, to make sure you don't stumble here. But you know, in this case, I'm going to show an example that's very black and white. And let's pretend I have this Verizon Home Internet Gateway. I've had it for several years, and all my devices are connected to. Let's say I have 50 devices, and they all already have the settings on here. And on the bottom of this device, it has uh, a Wi-Fi name and a Wi-Fi password, and it's very cryptic. On here, let's see what this one is. This one is Verizon underscore HMX6W6, right? But I was dumb when I set it up, and that's why I typed into 50 different devices to get them to connect here. And I don't want to have to do that again. Well, that's fine. I can get my new Wi-Fi router. This one here is an Express VPN Wi-Fi router. It's a very simple router that has a VPN automatically built into it. And so I can have all my devices securely connected with privacy and protection and that kind of stuff. So that's why I want to add it in this hypothetical situation. And on the bottom of it, it has its own sticker. And of course, the Wi-Fi names do not match. So if I were to plug this in, my devices would not connect to it automatically. I would have to change them and tell them to connect to AirCove-B11. So I don't want to do that. So on the bottom here, there's also an IP address which is basically the address that you can log into this to connect. Now they also have an app, I believe, and some uh, a lot of routers or Wi-Fi systems have an app. Like if you're getting a new mesh system, be it a Google Mast or Orbi, Netgear, whatever it is, um, uh, you might have an app that you can change these settings as well. But you can hook up to it via Ethernet cable or you can log in with the Wi-Fi that's in here on one device. And then go in there and change that Wi-Fi name or the SSID to the same one that you're currently using. And then you do need to change the Wi-Fi password as well. And this is where there are a couple hiccups. And one is the spelling and the capitalization do need to be consistent there. You don't need to, you don't add spaces or you know underscores if the other one does not have it. You have to be very consistent there. And if your device is really old, like let's say it's 10, 15 years old. Uh, for your current Wi-Fi router, it most likely is an older protocol of Wi-Fi. And if it's not the WPA or WPA2 uh, security for the Wi-Fi password, then it might not work because you can't have a password that um, is the older protocol, like a WEP protocol. So uh, I think for WPA, it's got to be like eight characters minimum. I think it's eight to 16 characters. Um, and that would be probably one of the hiccups that could happen to you. And if that's the case, it may be still an easier situation because you can make the Wi-Fi name the same. But when your device, you try to use it for Internet, it'll pop up and say, hey, your Wi-Fi password is incorrect. Please type it in. So at least you wouldn't have to go in there and search for a new Wi-Fi name. You could just uh, update the password with whatever the new password is. So that's what I would recommend there. The other thing that uh, might trip you up is if you have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So those are two different spectrums of Wi-Fi. The 2.4 gigahertz is um, more common in the older stuff, but ever since um, you know Wi-Fi 5 and then Wi-Fi 6 and now Wi-Fi 6E, they have um, more and more usage of this Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz uh, spectrum. And so a lot of the newer routers out there do something called band steering. And that's where it's still just one Wi-Fi name, even though they have these different uh, like little sub-segments of networks there. And the device automatically picks the best one. So if it's close and has good signal, it'll pick the 5 gigahertz. If it's further away or if it's an older device, or a lot of Internet of Things uh, devices will have just 2.4 gigahertz, they'll automatically connect to that one. So if you know that you have uh, two different Wi-Fi SSIDs, and one's a 2.4 gigahertz and one's a 5 gigahertz, Again, you can most likely mimic that setup in your new Wi-Fi gateway or router, whatever it is. And um, just know that some of them, you might have to go in there and check a box that says something like separate 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Then you can have the two different SSIDs. Um, that way you can um, make sure all your devices connect.
So hopefully that helps you guys out uh, regardless of what you're doing. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help answer them. Put them down in the comment section below. As always, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks.